In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install a dormer vent on your shingle roof. Dormer vents have been around for many years and have been used to vent thousands and thousands of roofs over the years. Dormers are essentially half round. They come in 18 and 24 inch sizes. So that width of the dormer is 18 to 24 and they do a great job in cross ventilating as well as exhaust. They do protrude a little bit higher. So a lot of people do prefer O'Hagan's or low profile vents, but dormers are definitely a safe way to go. Another thing dormers have is a screen here on the back which block any pests, bugs, and animals from getting into your attic. Dormers do only come in a galvanized finish, so you do have to paint them after you complete your roof. There's a few extra steps that we like to take to make sure that the dormer flashings and dormer vents never leak. Watch the video and find out how. The first thing we want to do is align our dormer to get a point, our center point, and cut the opening. Now we already have an opening cut. This is actually for an O'Hagan vent. So what we're gonna do is realign this and cut a new opening for the dormer. Essentially, you wanna match the opening at a minimum of the bottom of this flashing to make sure that you have proper airflow and you maximize your airflow. If your plywood is smaller than this and your opening is narrower, you're gonna minimize your airflow and really ruin the whole idea because we wanna get as much cubic inches of open uh, venting area as we possibly can from one vent. Now, one thing you want to make sure is you're essentially going to be installing your roof all the way up to the point that you want your dormer installed. You'll already have your underlayment here and that's totally fine. You don't have to pre-plan the dormer locations. You can decide that as you're moving up. Now, as we're aligning our dormer vent, we want to make sure that just like any other flashing, similar to Hagen's, um, we're aligning this at a minimum flush or below our shingle exposure line. So in the same area that you would install your shingle is where we want to bring our flashing. You can come a little further down. However, we don't like to come too far down as not to leave a large uh, area of dormer exposed. So we want to bring it down, let's leave it an inch below. Align it pretty much on both sides. Then what I, what I like to do is use a marker to first off mark the center of this dormer and align that. Now the easy way to do it is mark a line down here. Then I like to flip this around. That way I can measure my dormer and at the same time mark out my opening that I have to cut. All right, so we've got the bottom of our flashing marked out on our shingle. Now what we wanna do, what I like to do is measure it. So we've got nine inches further up. So we've got nine inches here. You can see we've already cut our below which is fine. Having a bigger opening doesn't necessarily hurt unless it's too big. But I'm gonna come here and mark the nine inches out on both sides here from our shingle line. Which can be pretty much right there. Right there, so this is gonna be the bottom of our opening. The center line is gonna be right here. We're gonna have a 16 inch width at the bottom. Now dormers taper up. So first off, we're gonna measure the height of it. 12 inches, here's the top. The top is another 12 and a half inches. We're gonna round that up to 13. Then what I like to do is just use my tape measure, essentially as a ruler, as a guide. You don't need to be precise, you can go a little bit larger than necessary and mark out your dormer opening. Now keep in mind that generally we wouldn't have this cut out here. We would just have an opening in this area here, but we're just gonna leave this here for now. It doesn't hurt for demonstration purposes, but generally you wanna make the opening slightly larger than the dormer itself. First thing we're gonna do is cut this paper back and take a skill saw and cut the opening out.
now that we've got our opening cut out, we're ready to install our dormer. Now we like to take one small step that's not necessarily recommended or required, I should say, by manufacturers, but I think it's a no-brainer. It's gonna take you a few minutes and really give you a second and third layer of waterproofing for your dormer. That's gonna be installing a bed of mastic pretty much around the back of the dormer. So in case there's any water that gets in, you're not going straight into your opening. Now for dormers, we only generally install the mastic on the back, on the top side and on the sides. We don't like installing on the bottom. The reason for that, if there's, in case any water gets in, we want it to be able to flow out the bottom. Water does not travel up, it travels down. So we want to leave a path for the water to flow. Now that we've got our mastic lined, we want to make sure we pretty much just align with our opening there. Place it down and again, give it a nice little squiggle here, a little move to make sure that all the mastic gets properly bedded down. Now we're ready to nail. We, the way we always want to nail is, first of all, we don't want to have any exposed nails on the bottom. We want to just have nails along the sides. Um, we use, even though dormers don't have a specific specification, uh, we use the same specification that's used on other flashings as it applies to this as well. Pretty much every four inches on center, about half inch to one inch in from the edge of the roof. We use regular galvanized hot dip nails, the same nails that you use for your shingle roof, we'll use around the dormer. Another thing we want to do, you can do this before or after nailing down the flashing, is bend these down. These lips here are bent up in case you use this dormer for a tile roof. If you're using it for a shingle roof, these need to be flat so to ensure that your shingles nail flat. So it's really not difficult. We've got that seam flat, our dormer uh, aligned, and we're ready to start nailing. So you can see nails every four inches on center, about half inch to an inch in from the side. Now we're ready to install our shingles. The first thing we want to do is put a bed of mastic right here at the edge. What that's going to do is give us a secondary layer of water protection in case there's any running water that goes diagonally or goes horizontally, it's not going to get past that flashing and it's going to come straight down. And it's also going to cover up our nail holes right here. So no need to go crazy, just a good a quarter inch bed along that seam is what we're looking to see. Now I've got our first piece of shingle pre-cut and on the next one I'll show you how to cut it, uh, at least the way we like to do it. Now, similar to O'Hagan's and other vents that we install, we always want to leave a half inch to three quarter inch gap to ensure that water properly flows along the side. So we're going to line our shingle here, leave that half inch gap, and we're ready to go. Uh, another thing we want to be sure of is we don't want to nail too close to the center of this flashing. We want to nail about three inches out along the edge of this flashing. So pretty much wherever this flashing line ends is where we want to install our first nail. Then the rest of the nailing pattern is going to be similar to regular shingles. One thing we want to do prior to installing our second shingle is cut the top of this first shingle off at a 45 degree angle. We call this dog earing the shingle. What that means is, or what this is going to do for us, is any water coming down this channel right here is not going to get caught and travel horizontally. If you can imagine that corner still being here. So if this corner was still installed, we have a chance and risk water getting stuck right here and traveling this way along the shingle. But now that we've removed this corner, when the water hits, it's going to travel back down into this channel and go where we want it to go. The way we usually cut our shingles, and this is a trick, you can do whatever you'd like. You can pre-cut your shingles or install them, then cut them. But we like to actually install it. So we're going to align it right here. And we're going to come a little bit extra on this dormer. Again, we're going to make sure that we nail it pretty much flush with the flashing right here. We don't want to go too far in. Now we're ready to cut this right here. And we have essentially a guide that we like to use kind of with our hands and cut that shingle.
All right, now that we've got our shingles installed up here on the side, um, we're ready to install our final shingle here at the top. The way I like to do it is align it pretty much on both sides and nail it again prior to cutting it. So it's aligned here. We would use just regular sh shingle nailing pattern. Now that we've got it nailed, the last thing is to just open up, cut that opening, and we're ready to go. That's it, we've officially completed properly installing a dormer vent on this shingle roof. Now, the few extra steps that you start to take, again, are not 100% necessary, but I definitely recommend them. It's just gonna take you a few extra minutes, but it'll ensure that this vent does not leak for years to come. Um, the last thing I wanna just emphasize, really important, is this channel right here. What this channel is made to do is take the water where we wanna go. You can see it's rolling smoothly down this channel, as opposed to risking going underneath the shingles. This concept will play throughout different installations and different flashings, but we always want to guide the water in the direction that's beneficial to us instead of having the water find its own way down. Guys, thanks for watching. We've got a lot of other videos on shingle roof installation. If we're missing something, let us know. We'd love to show you how to properly do the things that you want to do. Like, subscribe, and again, if you have any questions, let us know below.